to Adventures and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Now I have meandered my way through a lot of different skills at this point. And the vast majority of them, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just kind of muddle on through with like YouTube and Instructables to help and the blind confidence of somebody who doesn't know any better. But for a long time now, I thought it would be really cool if like every once in a while at least, I have somebody who actually, you know, knows what they're doing, show me how to do a skill. And today I get my wish. About a month ago, I got a really cool email from a guy named Gray Price, who's the proprietor of Firebrand Productions over in Providence, Rhode Island. There he produces all manner of sharp and pretty things, and most importantly, he actually teaches how to make knives. He was gracious enough to let me come to his shop and learn from him, and record it so that I could share it with you. So without much further ado, let's jump into it and level up this skill. All right, so jumping right into this, I was able to meet Gray in his natural element, the workshop, where he first gave me a rundown on how not to hurt myself in there before jumping right into what we're gonna do. All right, well, the first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, safety. Uh, while you're out here, uh, you really don't have to worry about really anything. If it looks sharp and pointy, it probably is. And if you wanna play with it, you know, just be careful. Uh, but when we head into the grinding room, which is right behind us, I've uh, got some PPE for you. Yep. Uh, the mask, definitely want to wear that because we don't want to be breathing in all that dust. Uh, some ears because our machine's going to be pretty loud. And if you're wearing glasses, I wore glasses for a long time. I never had an issue with sparks, but they're there if you want them. Okay. All right. Now, while we're in there, um, you're not going to really be able to hear me through my respirator and over the ears of the machine. So I'm going to use some hand signals okay. to kind of let you know what's up. See a thumbs up? You're doing great. Just keep going. Uh, if I do this, I just more or less have to point you in the right direction. Like a lot of times it's, you know, keep the material flat or use this part or go that way. Yeah. Really, really simple stuff. If I do this, we're going to pull away and turn off, but there's something I have to verbalize. Okay. Um, I've had to use that once in like 40 classes. Okay. So pretty uh, I hope I don't break, break your... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. All right. Uh, so this is the knife that we're going to be making. Uh, this is a great little just drop point utility knife. Mm -hmm. I use this around the shop for cutting open boxes and straying and scraping up old epoxy and stuff. Okay. Uh, this is the pattern that we're going to be using. Uh, it's the same shape. This is made out of mild steel and it's painted red, so I know it's not great stuff. But this is the knife material that we're going to be using. This is called 1095 steel. This has a 0.95% carbon content, making it a high carbon. Beyond the steel, we've got some brass pins that we're going to be setting into the handle to give it some lateral stability. We're going to be gluing that all together with a five ton epoxy. And then we've got a selection of handle materials for you to choose from, be able to dress your knife up and really make it yours. Cool. Now you may have noticed that the steel we're going to be using is all blue. That's because it was covered in this layout fluid. With this stuff on the metal, I was able to lay the template right on top of it and use just a sharp stylus to trace it all into place, including all the holes on the tang. Of course, if you don't have a template, you can just kind of sharpie on your perfect knife design however you want it. Anywho, with that all laid out, it was off to the drill press to get all those holes set into place. These are gonna help us to secure the handle on later. For now, it was off to Gray's badass grinder to start shaping this blade. This thing is super aggressive and the sandpaper we were using was like 35 grit, it was crazy. But it made removing all the excess metal a breeze. I was taught just to take little bites of the metal out with my belt as close down to the line as I could and then smooth it all the rest of the way out to get the shape I wanted. This grinder was great. I could use the radius of the roller at the top just to smooth out all the rounded bits. It was powerful and beautiful and mm, I want one. Put it right, put it right here. It's really the only room I have left in the shop, right here. <laughs> Seriously, I was stoked at just how easy this whole process was. In less than 10 minutes, I had this sweet little blank to work with. I can't express to you how nice it is to have somebody who actually knows what they're doing show me how to do this stuff. There's so many little tips and tricks that he was dropping in there that I can't add because this video would be absolutely massive. But if you have the opportunity to take a class like this for the weekend near you or something, I would totally recommend doing it. Though I do understand not everybody has access to classes like that. That's where today's sponsor, Skillshare, comes in handy. Skillshare has thousands of classes, so you're bound to find something you're interested in. You can learn what it takes to break into a new industry, or just like Gray, make a business out of what you love to do. Including knife making. See what we did there? Segway, perfect. I found this great series by Barrett Knives that'll walk you from start to finish through a lot of the things we're doing here today. He shows how to select the correct stock, which tools you need, methods for laying out your own perfect blade shape, 
how to shape it, how to heat treat, all the way down to sharpening this bad boy and calling it your own. He even has some information on how to forge your own blade using heat and hammers. It really is a great series and a great program if you're not able to find classes you're interested in in your local area. Or if you just want to take them in your underwear. I'm not judging. If you're interested in learning this or any of a thousand other skills, you're in luck. Because Skillshare has an offer for our community. The first thousand people who use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. If you do, leave down in the comment section what class you take. I'd love to know the stuff you guys are interested in and who knows, maybe I'll come and take it with you. I'm always interested in leveling up more skills. Okay, so with that good to go, next Gray was gonna show me how to set up the bevels, which are gonna become our blade. That's basically where the knife starts to thin out to become the actual sharp bit. He started by adding more of that layout fluid all along what will become the blade of my knife. Then busted out this cool little jig here, which has a tiny little spike sticking out of it. Basically, you just use this to glide all along the edge of the blank, and that spike makes two evenly spaced lines all along the middle of the stock. This is gonna give me a guide to shoot for when I'm grinding out that bevel. To get those bevels to be at the exact angle we're looking for, Gray went over to his grinder and used an electronic level to set the table at three and a half degrees off of zero. Now, even with the table of the grinder set up how it is, it'd be really hard for you just to have that stock kind of on its edge and get everything perfect. You're gonna be a little off. So to help get it perfect, he actually has this cool little jig here that just holds the knife into place and allows you to work the entire blade evenly without worrying about tilting it awkwardly or grinding your fingers away. Using this, it was really easy to just make even passes all along where I want my edge to be. I just had to be careful to bring it just to the line that I scored in place and try to do so as evenly as possible. And once all that layout liquid was cleaned off with a bit of acetone, check this thing out, it looks like a blade. There's a point in every project where stuff starts to come together and look like what it's gonna be, and that was this point for me. I was super excited by that. Though at this point, we didn't bring it down to an actual blade because the steel hasn't been hardened yet. It wouldn't hold a blade anyway. In order for that to happen, we have to go over to the forge and really heat this sucker up. And there's another section where having an actual like teacher there with you was super helpful. Gray was great just taking his time to show me how to safely heat up the knife and the proper technique to use to make sure everything was done evenly. Once the color of the heat was correct, he let me know that I could quench the blade in some oil he had nearby. Then we just had to let this little sucker cool off for a bit. All right, so what we just did is uh, an extremely stressful part of knife making. Okay, this is the moment that we took uh, a piece of steel that sort of resembled a knife and actually made a knife, all right? So this is called the quench. And what we've done is we've taken the steel to its critical temperature. And in this case, it's 1095. That's around the 1475 degree mark. Okay. All right. Now what that does is that allows all of the iron, because they like to form perfect cubes mm -hmm. to kind of open up. And then the carbon will filter inside. It'll melt, go into solution, go inside one of those boxes. Now what we do when we quench, we take it from 1475 under 400 degrees in about a second. Just kind of locks and it, it locks in. everything in place. Okay. So you're locking that moment in time. Now, if we've done our job right, we've actually done our job a little bit too well. Because what we've done now is we've created glass. Okay. All right, so this is an extremely fragile thing. You could take a hammer to it and ping, it's gonna break right on you. So the next part of our heat treatment is to throw it into the oven. And we're gonna go 425 degrees. Okay. We're gonna let it soak for an hour. We'll take it out, cool it down, go back in for another hour. So it's kind of like a spa day. Like we're gonna ease up on all of those internal stresses that okay. we just caused. So we've got a little bit of a break, take care of that. But first, we're gonna do our file test. So hang Okay. All right, so we're just gonna take our, our file and we're gonna start with the hardest one to make sure that everything's good. And you can hear, that's just like biting in. It's, it's really, really tough to push against. But we're gonna take this onto the blade where we hardened it. And you hear that difference? Skates right across. Yeah. Skates right across. So all these little marks that you're seeing, that's just the surface oxide. That's all the carbon that baked out of there. Totally fine. As long as this isn't biting in, you got a nice hard blade. So well done, my friend. Sweet. All right, so next up, we're just gonna go ahead and throw this into the oven. I've already got it preheated and we're gonna set a timer for an hour and 15. Make sure we get it up to the temperature and let it soak. Perfect. Awesome, love it. After an hour of that, we took the blade out to cool back off before putting it in again for one more hour. Then it was over to his sandblaster to just knock off all the surface grime and give the whole thing a beautiful uniform coat. And a sandblaster, I can go right here. So I'll be wedged in between a badass grinder and a sandblaster. Obviously you could just use like sandpaper or something if you're doing this at home, but a sandblaster. Think of all the things I can do with that. I can blast so much sand. 
Now we could have just started the fit and finish here, like putting the handles together and then sharpening the blade. But first, Gray thought it would be cool if we actually put this thing into some acid, which he called his forbidden tea, to blacken the blade. It doesn't do anything structurally, it just honestly looks really cool. Even more so after we bust out some of this metal polish and give the whole thing a nice cleanup. Oh, look at how slick that looks. Love it. So cool. From here, we're almost done. We just need to actually add on the handle to it and then sharpen the blade. To do that, we took the wood that I had chosen and stacked them on top of each other and put my knife blank on top of them. Then just kind of traced in with a sharpie where it'll go so we knew where everything had to land. From there, we clamped the whole thing together with some C-clamps so that we could head over to the drill press and get our holes for our pins in place. And this was actually a really simple but kind of a slick little tip here. To make sure everything stayed perfect, we just dropped in a pin after drilling that first hole out. This helps make sure everything stays put. Then we drilled out a second hole and dropped another pin in there. At this point, because the two pins are in there, that whole stack isn't going to be able to rotate or anything. It's going to stay exactly where we need it. With that knowledge, we can just drill out that last hole. Now, the astute of you might have noticed those wooden scales actually extend past the blade. So, like, the wood would kind of be where the sharp bit should be. Obviously, that's not a good look. So the next step was to remove my hunk of metal and just draw out whatever design I thought would look cool for where those scales terminate. Gray then just took this over to his saw to cut out the shape that I drew. Now, since that's going to end up being really close to the blade and I won't be able to get in there with some sandpaper, now's the time to just make sure everything's nice and smoothed out. And since those pins are in place during this, those scales won't move during that cut and the sanding process, so everything ends up being perfect. From here, we're gonna glue those scales actually onto the blade with some two-part epoxy. First though, to make sure that epoxy actually takes well, we washed everything with some acetone just to remove all the oils and made sure that our fingers didn't touch those areas so we didn't part some of our own oils onto it. Then Gray mixed up a two-part epoxy and buttered it onto the first scale we're gonna be using. He also added a bit of epoxy to one of the pins and seeded it into the hole. Doing this makes it really easy to just glide that knife into place, ensuring that it falls exactly where we want it to. Then a second pin with epoxy is added onto it and holds everything straight. With that sitting exactly where it needs to be, the second scale has some epoxy added to it and then glided right over those pins that are in place so it sits perfectly where it needs to go. Finally, we can set that last pin before locking everything together with C-clamps. I was told here to be extra careful not to secure those clamps too tightly because you could actually do it tight enough that it just pushes out all your epoxy. Basically, it just needs to be tight enough so that no light will shine through anywhere. This epoxy only takes about 10 minutes to set and then it was back off to the grinder to start shaping that wood. Getting rid of the excess material to match the contour of my tang was stupid easy. You just kind of grind the wood away until you feel it hit metal. Gray said when you see sparks, stop. Doing this only took a few minutes to get the wood into the rough shape I was looking for. From there, it was more of a refining process, just getting the look and feel I wanted down. You know, rounding out the corners, giving my fingers a comfortable place to set, making a handle. Once I was about 90% of the way there, I was told to stop and just finish the rest by hand so I could really refine it. And I am stoked with how good this came out. I was afraid I was gonna screw it up because it's a real aggressive sander and you can't put material back once you've taken it out. But I love how this thing feels in the hand. It's like, it's chunky, it's got enough body there so I feel like I'm grabbing something. I hate when there's like too little handle and something feels thin. This feels good. With that done, we just cleaned off the handle with a little bit more acetone to remove all the dust and oil and junk. Then added some boiled linseed oil just to help protect it and show off that lovely grain. For one last step, Gray brought this over to his grinder with 120 grit sandpaper and just added the edge of my blade into place. He has a super experienced hand, so he's able to hone this thing by eye and get it extremely sharp. And there you have it, my very own knife made by my very own hands. It was amazing to actually get out there and learn how to do this. Like starting with a hunk o metal and turning this into a knife with like a nice handle and everything only took a few hours. Really great to do. Special thanks to Grand Firebrand for taking his time and inviting me into his shop. It was amazing that he reached out and even more so amazing that he's willing to share this information with all of you. If you find yourself in the Providence area and want to take the same class that I took, He's giving a special offer to our community. Basically, by visiting his website, link in the description below, and using the promo code SKILL23 at checkout, you're able to save $50 on your class. It is a great deal for a really fun experience, and at the end of the day, 
you have a knife. That's awesome, that you made, so cool. All right, well, I hope you liked what you saw here. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves when you do that. It is a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are my Patreon members, our family, the people who make this possible. Seriously, if it wasn't for this community, we wouldn't be able to do any of these things that we love doing. So thank you all. Really appreciate what you do here. If you'd like to support this channel, consider joining our Patreon. Link in the description below. Otherwise, you can watch one of these videos here that YouTube thinks you'd like. I don't know which ones they're showing you, but I'm pretty sure they're both good. I like them all. I made them. So you know, I'm extremely biased. Check them out anyways.